Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. In this tutorial, we will install Oracle VM VirtualBox on Windows 10. Why would you want to do this? In short, to run other operating systems within a desktop window, allowing software not designed for Windows to be used in a Windows environment. You can view this as either a standalone tutorial or as a prelude to our three tutorials on running guest installations on Windows, in which we run Android, Ubuntu Linux and alternative versions of Windows from within VirtualBox. We start by ensuring that BIOS is properly configured for virtualization, which actually only requires one very simple change to the BIOS settings. We therefore need to enter BIOS upon device startup. The method for access varies with each motherboard, but your device's startup screen will usually advise as to which key should be pressed to enter BIOS. Our machine uses F2 or Delete, and function keys are typical candidates. Press repeatedly if required, until you see your BIOS screen. Having entered BIOS, the pathway to the relevant setting will vary by motherboard manufacturer. In this regard, your BIOS may be substantially different from ours. Our objective is to ensure that Intel virtualization technology is enabled for our system. In our example ASUS motherboard, we enter advanced mode by pressing F7 at the introductory screen. From the main advanced mode screen, we then select the advanced tab before selecting the CPU configuration option. The list of options available to us is extensive and it's therefore necessary to scroll down. Upon doing so, the Intel virtualization technology option is revealed. In this configuration, the default setting is disabled and therefore we need to enable it. Clicking the drop down menu, we simply select the option to enable. And our choice is now confirmed. All that remains is to save our revised settings and exit to the Windows desktop, which we achieve by pressing F10. We are presented with a summary of the changes, which in this instance confirms that the setting for Intel virtualization technology has been changed from disabled to enabled, and clicking OK will save the configuration, exit BIOS, restart the system and boot into Windows. With our BIOS correctly configured for virtualization, we can now proceed with the installation of VirtualBox. We open our web browser and navigate to the download page shown on screen now and in the written description accompanying this video. The download is moderately sized at over 200 megabytes, although this will be problematic only on the slowest of connections. In this instance, we are downloading using Google Chrome and therefore we click upon the upward pointing arrow, which turns downward, revealing a menu from which we can select the option to open. Selecting that option commences the installation. For ease of reference, we have closed the download web page, leaving only the installer visible. We simply click next to proceed. Whilst this installer presents a number of configuration options, novice users can simply click next to accept the defaults. In one particular installation, VirtualBox failed to install for us until we unticked the option for VirtualBox Bridge Networking, although we've yet to encounter this on any other system. Nevertheless, should you encounter problems during installation, you may wish to consider this as an option. Regular viewers will be well aware of our obsession with an organized folder structure, and this installation is no exception. We therefore modify the installation path to our liking and click OK to return to the previous screen. With the destination location modified and the remaining settings left at the default, we click next to proceed. We also accept each of the four default options presented on the following screen and again click next to proceed. It's worth noting that the installation will briefly disconnect your device from the network and you should therefore be mindful of any ongoing downloads or streaming media and ensure that any network dependent activities are in an interruptible position. With all configuration options now selected, clicking install will commence the installation. In a typical setup, user account control will seek confirmation of the installation and we click yes to confirm our intentions. The software will now be installed with a progress bar scrolling from left to right to indicate the progress of the installation. In accordance with our choices, an icon is added to the desktop from which we can launch VirtualBox in future. We are notified that the installation is complete. We click finish to complete the installation. We've left ticked the option to start VirtualBox immediately. VirtualBox therefore runs, taking us to the main window. From here we can create a new virtual machine, installing any number of operating systems, and we have created tutorials showing the installation of Windows, Android and Linux operating systems. Join us next time 
when we install a copy of Windows within Windows. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you can provide a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more, you are very welcome to subscribe to the Tech Fix Flicks YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Subscription is of course entirely free and provides easy access to all of the videos posted here. Clicking on the neighbouring bell icon means you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. You can also keep in touch by following the official Tech Fix Flicks Twitter account. Until your next Tech Fix, goodbye.